Okay. Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I'd like to study with you today from Colossians chapter 1. So we're starting a, a new book, and remember that if you're reading through the Bible with us, it would be in the Old Testament and Deuteronomy chapter 22, Colossians chapter 1, and also Proverbs chapter 22. And uh, as I have shared with you before, but I want to share with you again, uh, the Gideon Bible app, which reminds us that we could get onto the Gideon Bible app and study through the Bible. I think that this might even you be able to copy this here. And, uh, but it says uh, for your um, Apple um, device and so on, what you need to do there, search for the Gideon Bible app in the Apple Store and install it. For your Android device, search for the Gideon Bible app in the Play Store and also install it. So you download uh, this and put it there so you can focus on it. And that would be uh, great. Okay, now uh, we try to go through the New Testament in a year. Uh, we do actually more than just the uh, one time through the New Testament because we'll go into Revelation, the book of Revelation, twice, uh, once in August and then, God willing, in December. And then some of the other shorter books will cover more than once. The Gospels, though, we spread them out through the year. So often I know in the Bible reading uh schedules that people have it will have Matthew Mark Luke and John and then the rest of the year you don't read it in the Gospels well I've tried to spread those out through the year and we just finished the Gospel of John um, and so also now we're going in Col into Colossians uh, I will show you that if you go to our website bible-christian.org here and you go to and click on the news, I think of it as good news, and then you would be able to go right away to the chapters that we have been studying. Um, and then we have um, also other helps as with our bio, uh, our website, uh, questions and answers. Uh, you could go to that and all kinds of questions and answers. You could ask questions there, but we have uh, cults of our questions on cults and abuse questions, alcohol, Bible questions, children questions, on and on the list goes there. And you can uh, click on any one of those uh, you can go to our Facebook website. Uh, then also we have a lot of uh, Bible studies, articles in Spanish as well, theology. Uh, all of this miscellaneous uh, resources, uh, um, free, free tracks, and then audio. And with that, children's materials, art, and so on. And so hopefully this will be helpful to you. And uh, I encourage you to drop by our, our Bible study. Uh, to me, I think of it as uh, a Bible school. Because if you were to go, which is especially like the books of the Bible that we cover verse by verse, many different uh, comments from different commentaries and so on that I've studied through the years. And I would encourage you to check us out there. Then another thing before we actually get into the study today is that if you go to, which I hope you will, you go to YouTube 
you can just put in uh, like the name, the study, which is Colossians. And last year at this time I did Colossians as well. So it will come up even right now. And you would put in Colossians, then Gary Pinnell, and then that will come up. The uh, studies that we're doing, I'd like God willing to finish the book of or the New Testament. And then God willing next year, will go through a lot of the Old Testament. But right now, all of the New Testament, as far as I know, is on YouTube. But if you go there, please uh, hit subscribe. And that doesn't mean that you pay to be on and study it with us. It just, it's it's free. It just it shows you, shows us how many people are actually maybe getting into it and so on. So that's free. And I encourage you to get on there. Uh, but also, if you would like, if you like our Bible study, then tell us that. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into Colossians today. Colossians is uh, a church, Colossae is a church that Paul did not start. Uh, in, in the sense that he wasn't there uh, when it was started. It may have been started by people from Ephesus. And Ephesus and Colossae uh, are about 100 miles away. Well, in those days, traveling that distance would be quite a distance uh, to travel. And so uh, that uh, it was started by someone probably from the Ephesus church, which Paul did have a lot to do with that, and stayed there for some time and teaching the word admonishing them and so on and now he's sending a letter and we believe that the letter may have been uh also the book of ephesians may have been sent out at the same time uh, and so we're going to look at some individuals here that paul talks about that are with him he is actually this is one of the prison epistles he is in uh prison in rome at this time, uh, his first uh, prison uh, stint there in Rome. We believe that there were two times that this is, as you get to the end of Book of Acts, you can see where he landed in Rome uh, for a while. So it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. Now he calls Timothy sometimes his son because he's his spiritual son he didn't have any physical children paul didn't he wasn't married and here though he has um uh spiritual children but now timothy is considered a brother uh to paul he's been with him some time and uh, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae. So those that are faithful in Christ, uh, which hopefully were all of them. But it says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the uh, he greets them with peace, shalom in Hebrew, but of course this is written in Greek, and uh, from God our Father, so the Holy Trinity and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is speaking through them as they say these things, and even as the scripture is recorded, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. So, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints. So, Paul did a, spent a lot of time in prayer. prayer. I guess the person I admire most are people that are praying people. I will tell you, when we were missionaries in Trinidad and Tobago with uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship, uh, I met a person, his name is Tallboy. Now, that's not his name, but it's his nickname. Buderam, I think, is his last name and that. But the thing is, uh, he was a 
it had originally his family had come from India and then Trinidad and Tobago there's many people from India and Africa but probably about half uh, each way but anyway he is a man of prayer and to this day since the time that we were with him and then he came and stayed with us in the United States for uh, about a month but he is just a wonderful man of prayer he has lists of names that he prays for us and he still prays for us today that's the way paul was like he has prayed for these people even though he had not met them and he prayed for many others that he hadn't met and so he wanted them to know that uh, since we heard of your faith in christ jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven and uh that's, uh, <laughs> as I think about, uh, we have, uh, I have referred to him uh, several times, and that is uh, a person that helps people hear the testimonies of those that have been, had near-death experiences, and uh We've so I've mentioned him, but one of the things that he says at, before he finishes the the testimony, he'll always say, um, he'll say, and if you know Christ as your Savior, heaven is in your future. <laughs> okay, and uh, so that's something to realize that heaven is in our future, and so then it says. Um, which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. No. He's saying that it's come into all the world. The gospel has. And he doesn't say things unless he means it. The known world of that time had the gospel. And um, it's amazing. 32, about 32, 33 years after uh, the day of Pentecost, here the gospel has gone into all the world. Do you see the seriousness of the early Christians and willing to go to the lions and be burned at the stake and uh, Nero's uh, Rome and just to die for the Lord, knowing that he not only came, uh, but he died for us. And so um, the, the people were very serious about just wherever they went. They were, if they were Christians, they started a little Bible study there. And then that Bible study would turn into a church. And so it was. Now, the Colossae was destroyed pretty much by an earthquake um, sometime uh, not too long after this book was written. And so it's just wonderful that the gospel was going out there because we'll meet those people in heaven even if the church is not there and then i i've mentioned this before i always wondered you know where were the the church where are the churches and how why aren't they still there now in the time that we live in because uh, the islam and muslims have uh, conquered the world and before in a sense in many of the places that would be the bible places the christians were killed uh, and that's the reason they're not there today, uh, because uh, this murderous, supposedly religion, uh, murderous group of uh, Islam is, uh, you know, not all of them are terrorists, but many, uh, there is a lot of that, and because that's in, people wonder, well, why are they doing this? Well, it's because it's in their Quran to kill the Christians and kill the Jews. And uh, so they're doing that because they believe it. And I believe that is uh, 
Uh, their leader is really Satan, and that's who they worship because that could only come from Satan. But that's the reason that these churches, some of them, are not there to the in this time, is because they've been destroyed, and the Christians have been destroyed by the Muslims that were there in the past and that are there in many places even today. All right, so, uh, but at this time, Paul is writing to them. It's a vibrant church. It's a godly church, and they're living for the Lord. They're getting the gospel out. And so um, he says, the, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and bringing forth fruit, Yes, spiritual fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth, as you also learned from Epaphras. Epaphras and uh, we uh, believe that he had something to do with the uh, founding of the church there. He says, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. So when he got a chance, he went to share with Paul uh, about that. And Paul had heard about the Church of Colossae through Epaphras. And uh, then verse 9, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Again here, he's praying for them. Do we pray for them? You can travel around the world. You don't have to be uh, travel around the world physically. You can be a missionary by praying. And uh, so that's what Paul did even when he was in jail. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's what Paul was praying for them, that they would be in the word of God, they would be growing in the Lord, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. We've talked before that we're not saved by good works, but we are to live by doing good works, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. These were to have in our life as a Christian, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And here he calls them saints. We're called saints. And some people, oh no, I've heard... Uh, one Christian in a Bible study uh, fellow, he's saying, oh, no, I don't think of myself as a saint. I don't think that, that we can be saints. And because uh, no doubt he had come from a Catholic background or his wife had, and uh, they would think of saints as somebody who had done uh, maybe a, a miracle or more, and, and they had done this and that and the other thing. No. When you receive Christ as your own personal Savior, you become a saint. You're baptized into the body of Christ, which we all belong. And uh, so that all of those that have repented and turned to Christ to save them. And that is wonderful to think. We're saints, all right? That's kind of like up there with the angels almost, isn't it? <laughs> and so we think of that he has delivered us from the powers of darkness amen uh like e israel came out of egypt uh pharaoh was a picture of like satan and uh, egypt was a bondage of the world that we're in and the bondage of satan and we've been delivered from that darkness in the world some people don't even realize they're living in darkness and they get saved and all becomes light in the Lord and conveyed us, like a conveyor belt, <laughs> us into the kingdom of the son of his love, which Jesus is the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, 
We're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ alone, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, we we have to stop and say something here because he is the in the image the of the invisible God, the Father. In other words, when Paul or Paul, when Jesus talked to um, his disciples before he went back to heaven in John, we looked at that John chapter fourteen and verse six. He told them, "I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me." But then as they were visiting about that and so such an intimate time that we've even talked about recently in the study of the Gospel of John, there uh, the disciples were asking Jesus questions. And Philip asked, well, uh, if you could show us the Father, then we'll be satisfied. And Jesus told Philip, <clears throat> Philip, have I been so long with you? And you still don't understand. Okay. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the Father looks like Jesus. He acts like Jesus. He does everything like Jesus because Jesus does everything like the Father. And the, everything that Jesus taught was from the Father. And it's hard for us to imagine this, but I believe and have we may see a glimpse of the Father. Uh, we're not sure what it will be like, but that we will see Jesus. He is has a glorified body like you and I. The Father never had a physical body like we have, but I believe that we can we will know that He was He's there and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sometimes uh shown as like a dove and it says like a dove and so on uh the way that he was the uh, way that he is judy it's good to see you uh, sister and the lord and possibly our cousin we're gonna have to visit some more together lord bless you sister but we're here in colossians chapter one and we're at about uh yes verse 13 where we've been delivered from the world of darkness the world that satan is in charge of and god has allowed for a time and uh, that but when we're saved we're saved out of that world of darkness uh, where satan is the leader and uh, the world is doing their thing and that's uh, what we've been delivered from and praise the lord and then uh, through his blood that's how we're delivered um, by faith in our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. And then he talks about, and we were looking at that, invisible. He is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is, when we look at him, the firstborn of our all creation. And so um, Jesus rose from the dead. And he's been given great authority one day we, if we pass away, or at the rapture of the church, which we're looking forward to, and then we will be part and parcel of him. We are the bride of Christ, but we will be like Jesus in every way, and we will never be um, God in that sense. We are the sons of God, the children of God, uh, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, uh, but we'll never be uh, omniscient, knowing everything. Uh, we will never be omnipresent, every president wants, and we will never be all powerful, but we will be like Jesus in that. We will inherit what he inherits. And so, uh, uh, Jesus told Philip that Philip when he wanted to see the father when you've seen me you've seen the father all right it's uh, interesting and uh talked about this recently that sometimes I look in the mirror and I boy I look more like my father every day it seems and uh but uh, so 
That's why Jesus calls him the Father. He is the Father. That does not mean that he uh, had a beginning. Jesus was always with the Father. But uh, he did take on a body like you and I. So in that sense, too, uh, G uh, God is the Father of Jesus because he was uh, Mary, was Jesus' mother, and God is his Father. And the Holy Spirit worked in her that that is exactly what happened. It, of course, never happened before and will never happen again. But that because of that, Jesus is totally man and totally God. All right, I'm going to repeat that because someone at a Bible study that we were at, and I've shared this before, but he said uh, that Jesus was half God and half man. No, that's not true. Jesus is totally God and totally man. And so we can relate to him. Uh, he went through things that we go through. Uh, and that's what God intended, God the Father. And that's what he's saying here in this passage. No. And then, verse 16, For by him all things were created. So before there was anything created, God doesn't have to sit on a chair, doesn't have to lay on a bed, uh, he doesn't get tired, he doesn't go to sleep, so they did they didn't, there was nothing there, physical, to begin with. Christ created all these things. And for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, invisible to us, like the angels and so on, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Now that is amazing, isn't it? Uh, it? When you were in school and you studied in science, you study about the atom. And um, uh, we like to start with the kids in, uh, uh, in physics and chemistry. And in chemistry, you study the periodic table and the, all the elements on the earth and what they're made of uh, how they're they have the nucleus and they have their protons and the the, the neutrons uh, the uh, electrons and so on and the so you learn about that and that everything is made up of that and we start with hydrogen and oxygen h2o which is water and you study about that how it's made up well guess what Jesus made all of that. And sometimes I think when we're first saved, we have kind of a small view of God. And uh, there's a book written uh, it says that uh, your God is too small because they don't realize. And when I'm going on a walk and I look at all the rocks and look at the hills and climb on a, uh, uh, a mountain and look down and so on, to realize that God created all of this. Jesus created all of this. He's greater than we can imagine. Uh, the molecules and the atoms and everything, uh, he created all those. He holds them together. That's why it says that everything that is visible and invisible, he's created all of those things. And that just blows our mind. It gives us a whole different view of who Jesus is. And that's important in that uh, he is before all things and in him all things consist. Now, if you read, of course, the rest of the scripture, we're gonna need to move along here quickly. Uh, you know that uh, right now there is a law in science that nothing is being created or destroyed. All right, it just changes forms. Well. That's true. Right now, we can agree with that. But at one time, God did create everything. And in the future, he's going to recreate the heavens and the earth. And I believe right now, they're formless and void. Uh, the things in outer space, the planets and so on, like our earth was. There may be some water on it. There was water on Mars. Mars had 
some water. The moon has some water, it seems. Uh, it has ice there and that sort of thing. Well, uh, but they're formless and void, these other planets. And here, one day that says the Lord is going to recreate the heavens and the earth. And he did that to begin with. He is God. Nothing is too hard for him. And I think when we're praying, sometimes we lose sight of that. We need to remember that when we're praying that nothing is too hard for God. And uh, he can answer our prayers. And he says, is his hand shortened that he cannot answer? No, it's not. And so we need to trust him for great things. And then, and uh, he is the head of the body, okay, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Now Jesus is restoring. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, uh, Satan took over dominion of the world, but now through Christ's death and resurrection and through us as Christians being born again, and then later as Israel as a nation comes to know him as their Messiah, there we are the first uh, and uh, firstborn from the dead, from the old life. Now we're going to be one with, we are one with him and he, may have the preeminence though as he's the head of the church and he is our king he's king of kings and lord of lords for it pleased the father that in him all the fullness should dwell and jesus who was born in this earth of the virgin mary and then he went on to take our place on the cross became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, that would be like the angels, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. God can, because of Jesus' death for us on the cross, God can be holy and still is holy. He, because Christ took our place, and God can accept us, the Father, through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the book of Colossians, there's a couple of things that we didn't mention here. Uh, Ephesians talks so much about uh, we are in Christ. Uh, Christians or believers are in Christ. But Colossians talks a lot about Christ in us. Isn't that amazing? I mean, look at... Ephesians, we are in Christ, but he is also in us. He's in us by his Holy Spirit. He's made us a new creation, and we need to understand this. And the book is pointing that out. And so, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled, he's brought us back to bought us back to himself, redeemed us, made us new in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. That's how God wants us to go home to be with him. We won't be that way till we get to heaven, but that is the goal, uh, to be perfect as I am perfect, God says. And if indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast. Now, if you don't turn back, if you're serving the Lord and you're walking closer to him each day and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to you, to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. So even at that time, the gospel had gone into the known world. Now we need to re-get it out to the known world because there's a lot more of the world. And so I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. So it's paying off all that Paul went through, the many times he was whipped and shipwrecked and and uh, imprisoned and on and on it's paying off and whatever we do for the lord it will pay off it will pay in uh, 
our children being saved, our grandchildren being saved, and our great-grandchildren and our descendants that come from us and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. And so we've said before that uh, Jesus, uh, and it talks about filling up the sufferings of Christ, that uh, as the church goes out and suffers, uh, Jesus goes with them. Even as uh, Peter, we talked about, would be crucified upside down, and Jesus went with him. He went through the sufferings that Peter went through, and all of the martyrs in the world that are, this is taking place around the world and has from the day of Pentecost that will to the rapture of the church, and Jesus is with them, and going through, as it were, the sufferings with them, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship uh, from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Uh, we, this is our stewardship, the Christian life that we are in. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with our money? What are we doing with our time? How are we using it with our gifts? The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, the church age is a mystery, all right, it has been, but now it's being revealed. But now has been revealed to his saints, to believers, to them God willed to make known what are the riches, the spiritual riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. <laughs> and the, the, the Jewish nation rejected Jesus at that time, but as a result, Gentiles from around the world are receiving one. So uh, with the Lord, everything is valuable and important and has purpose and uh, all things work together for good, we know that uh, for God, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. So that's how Paul had lived his life. And that's the way God wants us to live our life. We need to go to prayer. And let's do that at this time. Father, we just thank you for your word. We th thank you that you saw fit to send your son and take our place and to die and rise again, that his blood can wash away our sins. Thank you for that. And we just pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. Shalom. And uh, yes, there we go. Um, we, uh, yes, Judy, I'll, I'm going to talk to my sister Bonnie and we'll visit some more. Uh, we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.